In the past, we've talked about several common issues or failure points with Subaru CVTs. In today's video, we're gonna dive deep into one of those concerns, one of those issues, and that being CVT chain slip. We're here with my 2011 Outback with 222,000 miles on the clock. And just last week, I experienced a little bit of chain slip. We're gonna talk about what it is, why it happens, how to diagnose it, and what your options are once you figure out that that is your concern. With that said, let's go ahead and jump into the video. So guys, as I said in the intro of the video, this is my 2011 Outback 2.5i Limited with 222,000 miles on the clock. Those of you that have been watching the channel for a while know this was previously my brother's Outback, but recently I acquired it from him. And as I stated many times, this is the factory original EJ253 in this car, as well as the factory original TR690 CVT. And about 20,000 miles ago or so, we replaced the torque converter and the valve body as they both failed at relatively the same time point with the typical stalling out issue of the 10 and 11 TR690 with their torque converter clutch issue and the good old torque converter clutch solenoid, lockup solenoid burning out in the valve body. So all of the quote unquote common issues have occurred in this old TR690, which is just the second year model that Subaru had the CVT out. And again, we've done 222,000 miles and it's been great up to this point. Now, a couple of weeks ago, I had to let my girlfriend drive the car for about a week while I worked on her or my white 2015 2.5i Limited. We had to do some hub bearings on the back, plug a tire, do an oil change, all that stuff. We hit 250,000 miles in that car, which has been a great car. Only paid 6,000 bucks for it. You can check out the series of videos on that car. But what we're talking about today and what you all clicked on is CVT chain slip with Subaru CVTs. Now, I haven't talked about this a lot in the past because I haven't had first-hand experience with it. I haven't had uh, customers bringing me a car with chain slip. It's always been either the torque converter failure or a valve body failure. That's the two main common failure points on these Subaru CVT units. But as these are getting much older and higher mileage, chain slip is becoming more of an issue. Now, what is chain slip? So chain slip is where the metal chain that goes between the primary and secondary pulley or variator in the CVT actually slips on one of those pulleys. Now it can either slip on the input pulley or the output pulley, or it can slip across both. Now what happens again is there is a metal chain the variators are conical shaped pulleys that can vary their shape to vary their ratio or their diameter. And you know, we talked about how a CVT works in the past. So as you drive, that chain is constantly riding on those two pulleys, getting pulled and pushed between the primary and the secondary. Now, after a while and a lot of miles and a lot of consistent driving at consistent speeds of 45, 55 mile an hour or whatever your posted speed limits are, you get wear from that metal chain on those metal variators. Now, replacing your fluid and keeping on top of your maintenance helps to minimize that wear. But if you don't change your fluid and stuff builds up in the fluid, suspends in the fluid, it can help to increase the wear on the pulleys and the chain. And when it wears enough, you get a little bit of a slick spot and under the right conditions, the right load, the right strain on the vehicle, on the transmission, the torque can actually cause that chain to slip over that pulley, either for a quick burst, a small little hiccup, or for quite a while and make a horrible squealing sound inside the vehicle. And sometimes you just don't even realize cause they're little micro slips. Now, what is the root cause of this? Again, it's a lot to do with just wear and tear and higher mileage. A lot of it has to do with failure to maintain, not replacing that fluid as you should, keeping good fluid in there to keep that chain and those variators lubricated without having uh, solids or metal fragments or particulates suspended in that fluid, acting as abrasion, abrasives to accelerate that wear. Uh, that kind of stuff can 
increase the likelihood of developing chain slip as well as a lot of heavy acceleration, like really dogging the car, towing with it, or just generally abusing it can increase the chances of the chain slipping inside the CVT. Aside from that, another issue is just general chain stretch from the chain being old. They stretch out and wear between the links and pins and elongate, get longer. And the tensioner, the guide in there can only take up so much of that slack. So your chain can stretch with age and mileage and cause it to slip just as well. Or as the case of the Subaru Ascents of late, they could have the chain guide or tensioner break or wear, cause slack in the chain and keep it from holding the traction, holding that torque on the variators. So the main question is, how do we diagnose it? How do we know that chain slip has occurred? And for that, you are going to need a decent bi-directional scan tool. And we've got one here from Think Car. They sent this out to me about two weeks ago and I've been playing with it. It's a very affordable bi-directional scan tool. It's very similar to Launch and Top Don as far as the program is concerned. And we'll get into that a little bit later. But uh, this is a ThinkScan 689BT, if I remember correctly. And uh, I'll pull up some data pids and show you exactly what we need to look at and monitor to know if we have chain slip in our CVT or if our concern is something else. Check out SubaruPartsDeals.com, your online retailer for genuine Subaru parts. Easy to navigate website. You can search by model, year, and trim, or you can simply type in your VIN number to easily find the parts you need for your Subaru or you can shoot them a call or an email and their staff will be glad to help you figure out what parts you need for your DIY Subaru repair projects. As a big thanks to you viewers, SubaruPartsDeals.com has offered up a promo code Mr. Subaru in all caps, good for 15% off shipping of your order. SubaruPartsDeals.com, a Subaru genuine certified seller of parts for your Subaru vehicle. Anytime you get ready to do any repair on your Subaru, check them out, price them out. They got some of the best prices out there on Subaru Genuine Parts. So guys, as I just mentioned, our most effective tool in diagnosing CVT chain slip and differentiating it from something like a misfire, which ironically enough, some of the CVT equipped Subarus, when they have a misfire, does feel like an issue with the CVT. I experienced this on my 2015 a while back after buying it. Luckily, I just needed spark plugs, not a CVT, but it did feel like there was an issue in the transmission from that spark sporadic misfire. But again, this is a really cool little uh, scan tool here. We've got our dongle that just magnets on the back. So we'll get this hooked up to our diagnostic port under the dashboard, boot it up, and I'll show you what parameters, what data pids we want to monitor to be able to differentiate if our issue is in our CVT. Now, what you want to put on the screen, there's really just two you want to see. Uh, but there's five you should probably look at, and we're not going to graph, but four of them. But actual gear ratio, engine speed, primary and secondary pulley speed, which are what we're going to really monitor, and then turbine revolution speed. So we're going to go through and graph this. Now we've got our actual gear ratio, engine speed, primary and secondary pulley speed. Now these two should move in pretty much unison. Now what I mean by that is the graph should much follow each other as far as amplitude. Now the RPMs will be different. As you see, the primary is spinning faster than the secondary right now. And then once we get up to cruising speed, the secondary will be spinning faster than the primary because of the gear ratio switch and all that. Now, if we see a slippage event, we will normally see a big spike. So in a chain slip event, normally the chain slip seems to occur on the primary pulley. That's the one that is getting the power from the engine, the torque from the engine, and forcing the chain around to the secondary pulley to move the car. So the primary pulley normally, from what I've seen and what I've heard, is the one that gets slipped, but either one of them can slip. So we'll go for a test drive and show a little bit of that. But what you're looking for in terms of a slip event is a spike in the RPM on either one of these. These should move fairly evenly. So they should be fairly smooth, fairly consistent. 
uh, around 40, 45 mile an hour. Primary pulley with the torque converter locked is basically mimicking engine speed. So if you accelerate and deaccelerate, give it some gas and, ex and let off, you'll see like a triangle or a pretty steep triangle. But with slip, you're basically gonna go from zero to 100. You're gonna see uh, a straight line essentially of that slip because you're gonna go from your consistent RPM to a freewheeling RPM when the chain slips in almost instantaneously. So you'll see a spike and then it could peter back off or a spike up and then spike back down uh, when there is an actual slip event. So you're looking for a spike in one of these. Normally, if it's a spike in all of them, you have a misfire event. There's been issues with phantom chain slip events from misfires, which I experienced in my 2015 Outback, as I mentioned earlier. But normally when it's a misfire, you'll see a spike or a wiggle or something across all of the pids, not just one or the other. So if all of the things in the transmission are experiencing the same thing, it's not slippage, it's something else acting on it. Uh, and that would be a misfire issue in the case of that vehicle. So we're gonna go for a quick test drive. I'll show you some of the data driving. I don't think we're gonna have a slip event. I've been driving for over a week now and haven't had a slippage event. I'm not gonna try to force it to slip just for the video and to show you guys, but I'll try to put some screenshots in of other data pids or of other uh, screenshots from scanners that have picked up on CVT chain slip in Subaru. So let's go down the road and get some data on the screen. So as you see here, you should get fairly similar humps and bumps, so to say, between the primary and the secondary. Now, of course, their RPMs are different, but their speeds as a whole graph should mimic each other very closely. Now, we're approaching 55 mile an hour cruising speed here, and as I taper off, you should see, again, that the engine speed pretty much matches the primary pulley speed, and the secondary pulley speed is now petering off and consistent. So again, if we had a slippage event, we'd see a spike somewhere. Now, as you saw, the primary just increased as we saw the engine RPM increase because I got back on the throttle from coasting. So what we're gonna do is just go for a quick little drive. If I happen to catch a slippage event on the data pids, I will screen record it and show it to you guys. But other than that, I'm just gonna take a quick drive around and back and uh, hopefully for myself, don't see slippage. So guys, we're back from the test drive. Unluckily, no chain slip events for me. Unluckily for you guys, so no example to show you on the screen, but I'll put some examples up of data to show slippage for those of you interested. But now the question is, what do you do after you have identified that you have chain slip in your CVT, what are your options? So you're back from your test drive, you have experienced chain slip in your CVT, you've seen the data pids to prove that you have chain slippage inside. What are your options? Well, unfortunately, it's not gonna be a cheap fix. Once you have slippage, you have an issue, you're gonna need to go in there and physically replace components, the variators, the chains, the guides, or the entire CVT unit. Now there are band-aids, there are things you can do to uh, prolong the life of the CVT, but once that chain has slipped around, if you've ever seen metal on metal, it's gonna pull a slick spot. It's gonna do some wear, some damage on that variator in that particular gear ratio, and it's gonna create a more slick area for that chain to slip more and more consistently in that spot. So what you can do is change your CVT fluid, or you can use one of these uh, more or less snake oils. I'm not promoting this product at all, but it is an option, a CVT chain slip additive. Now I'm sure that's just a friction modifier to make the fluid more gritty and more abrasive so that chain has something to dig into on that metal variator and prevent it from slipping. Again, it's not an endorsement. It's not me telling you to use it, but you know, once your chain starts slipping, you're gonna need a CVT before too long. So if you wanna put some kind of additive in there to try to prolong the life and get some more miles out of it, I mean, that's up to you, but your options are kind of limited. You can change your fluid and hopefully that helps change your fluid, add this additive, 
But at the end of the day, you're gonna be replacing that CVT or tearing it down and putting a chain guide and variators in it. Either way, it's not gonna be a cheap fix at the end of the day. So again, as always, the key to preventing this is good maintenance, always servicing your CVT on time. Every three years, 36,000 miles, drain and refill the CVT fluid. Yes, it's expensive, but fluid is always less expensive than an entire transmission replacement. Spend the pennies to save the dollars, so to say. You want to spend that money on your maintenance to not have to spend a ton of money on a repair later on. An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure, as they say. And for any of you interested in the little Think Car scanner we use today, I'll put a purchase link in the description of the video for you to check out on that. And so guys, that'll do it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for future Subaru repair and diagnostic videos. Thank you so much again. I'll see you in the next one. <music>